Okay. Well, everyone, and thank you for coming to the Energy Efficiency Pilot Review tonight. My name is Henry Vigent, and I have a special guest, uh, William Geist. Um, he is a CEO of Madison Energy Group, who has a uh, vast knowledge in energy efficiency. Uh, Will has brought some unbelievable products to the market space that allows uh, some qualified businesses to have pilot programs. And uh, I want to ask you, what is your definition of a pilot program and, and how do people qualify for that? Sure. So the um, well, first, how they qualify is a, a business needs to have either either ten locations or a total deal value of twenty five thousand dollars, right? So if they needed twenty five Intel HVACs or you know maybe twenty Intel HVACs and ten Energy Squares, some combination of something that adds up to twenty five thousand. And the reason that we have that threshold is because there's a, a certain amount of money. It costs uh, several thousand dollars to run this pilot program, right? Uh, Madison Energy has to send a technician on the road to install the meters, then to go back and install the product, then to go back a third time and pull everything off. And then we pay our engineers to do the reporting and, and put all of this together for the client. Um, and so I kind of answered the other question as well in terms of what the pilot program is. The, the reason that we do it is because it is the most accurate way to show a client what kind of money they're saving. And, and I'm going to do a separate uh, video at some point later on, but a lot of times people want to do things and then they look at their energy bills and there's probably a dozen different reasons on, on why that's not accurate. And the best case that I'll give you right now is even utility companies who have access to all the information, when it's time for an incentive or a rebate, even they won't look at that. They make us do this process uh, that we do with the pilot program. They, they want to see the meter data, uh, but we'll, we'll talk about that more another time. Excellent. Well, uh, Will, you uh, have these great proposals, and uh, you know the thing about it is the customer receives a proposal, and you usually go over this proposal with the customer. Now, I know this is an engineered, uh, third-party engineered proposal. May you go over this proposal th this evening to uh, share with the leaders here at Viv on how to uh, not only review, but also to go over uh, as well. Yeah, so I'm going to go through this proposal now. This is, uh, just so you guys know, this is a full proposal. Uh, there are condensed versions in your back office as well, which are just single page versions that just give the results. Um, this is a full proposal. I'm going to go through this. It might look a little bit intimidating because it's, there's a lot of information, uh, but don't be. Number one, I'm going to show you, I'm going to simplify it for you and show you where the important information is. Just know that it's the reason that there's so much information is that it's, it's very it's thorough and, and, and robust, right? We want to give the client um, everything that, uh, that we have so they can see that data and, and it sort of helps to build their confidence in the project, right? So the proposal that you have in front of you tonight, this is, uh, it's branded for a Best Western Plus, but this is for a company that we did that they, that they not only own hotels, but convenience stores and some other things as well. And so the reason that I picked this proposal is because it literally has all four technologies in it. Um, and so you can see what each one looks like. And so the, the second page here, this is just a really fancy way of going through the, the pilot program protocol, right? This is just, uh, it, it, this describes exactly what I had said, how we come out, we install the meters, we let them run for seven days, then we come out again, install the technology, let that run for another seven days, and then we come out a third time and take it off and, and do the analysis. So just looks professional there. Um, this is a just a single page sheet for the energy squared, just in case you know the client or if they've got other partners that have come into the, the conversation, it just gives some bullet points on, the, on on what the product is in case you need that for reference. HMS engineering, this is a, a background on Philip Stewart. This is my refrigeration engineer. I use him for all things refrigeration, which is energy squared. Uh, anti-sweat controls and the ECM tech, the EC motors and controllers when we do that. And you, you'll notice he signs off on this report as does our other engineer. So this is an energy squared report. And as you can see, there's a whole lot of numbers on here, but what we need to focus on is this first section, the operating basis, right? And so the left side, look at the, the left side of this report as the before and the right side is the after. You can see without energy squared and with energy squared. So the projected run hours for the year, because we want to look at things on an annual basis, right? Business owners, if they're smart, they look at things long term. 
So the data shows that without Energy Squared, they would have the, the compressor for this walk-in cooler would have run for 6,893 hours. Once we put the Energy Squared on, it's only projected to run 5,429. That is a 21.2% reduction. Now, where does that come from? Because the Energy Squared provides a more accurate means of temperature measurement, we're reducing compressor cycles, right? And here they are right here. We went from 10,505 to 4,722. Literally cut them in half or more, 55%. So the, these compressor cycles that we eliminated are what in, in turn eliminated that compressor runtime. The next two sections are by month. I typically, I'll, I kind of skip right over that with the client. I, I point to it, but then I, I kind of go past it. I want to look at things on an annual basis. So based on these numbers, this number down here at the bottom, 691.03, that's what we would look to save that client per year for this cooler, $691. Um, and then we've got their return on investment at 10.4 months. This was at 10 cents a kilowatt hour. Uh, any, any questions? Before that, I want to kind of take them as I go. No, that's uh, really good. Uh, well, I, I have everybody muted right now. Okay, all right. So maybe write down questions, we'll, we'll come to the end. But the, the important part is for this report, you just want to look at the top piece here. And as a matter of fact, for the newer reports, I had them add in the, um, the kilowatt hours for, for the year. So there'll be three lines here now. Uh, but you want to look at this, and then you dive right down to, here's what you're saving, here's your ROI. Now. This is a page with a bunch of numbers on it, right? 6,893, 6, this is where it came from, 6,893. I literally pay this engineer to download a meter and transcribe the number from here up there, right? But we got you know, third party hands. The, the meter does the calculation. It projects the number based on the usage. So we download these, the, the, they get this page here, let me back it up a little more. So the top is the before and the bottom is the after. So this is week one and this is week two down here. And so you can literally see these numbers, uh, 6893 and then 5429 down here. There's your reduction. Okay. And then you've got the, the number of turn-ons or the compressor cycles. So you went from 201 to 91. That one we got to do a little bit of our own math. This is also is a graph that comes from the compressor, just gives a visual aid to the data, right? Um, there's a, a study out there that says people are 93% more likely to believe data if there's a picture that goes with it. So we started putting the graphs in there. And then we actually give them the raw data as well. This is a daily total. And it, this is all the same data we would give the utility. So this is, just, this is just stuff that we show. We don't really dive into that. All right, anti-sweat control. For those of you who don't know this, this is for convenience stores and grocery stores. All of the, all convenience stores have a, anytime you've ever been in a gas station and you go in the coolers to get a drink, those cooler doors, that whole, that, that, that whole system has heaters on it. Even though it's keeping drinks cold, the frame and the doors have heaters so that it keeps them free of condensation. These heaters run 24 hours a day. And the reality is they don't need to run anywhere close to that. So we have a controller that looks like this that we connect to the system. And based on the humidity and the temperature, it will only run those heaters when they act actually need to be run. And these, the energy savings is actually anywhere between 80 and 85%. It's, it's tremendous. Um, the reason why we're able to get so much is uh, we used to be about 50%. And now we, we, there's actually three heaters in the system. There's a door, a frame, and a mullion. We separate them out and we control them separately. So we get 30 to 35% by doing that. Uh, which is just, uh, it's really good. So, well, can you hear me? I can. I wasn't sure if I was still muted. So if we're working with a restaurant and behind the bar, they have a couple of those little refrigerators with beer and wine in it. Is that one of those kind of refrigerators also, or just don't even mess with them? No, they're, they're not worth it. You okay. Can, yeah. I've kind of figured that. Yep. All right. Get ready for this. So anti-sweat heaters. This is what this data looks like. The before without, well, it says energy square, that's a mistake. Uh, without the anti-sweat, 8760, that's 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Once they added the anti-sweat, 1,314. Look at that, 85% reduction. We don't do anything for the compressor cycles because there is no compressor. 1,024 
dollars a year that that, that that business owner would save. And a convenience store has, they need anywhere from two to three, maybe four of these at the most. Um, convenience stores are a great, great opportunity. 11.7 month ROI, boom. Same type of thing in terms That's of the data. One. That's for one? Yeah. This is one. So wow. what you wanna look at is you need an anti-sweat per door set. So when you look at these, these doors in the gas stations, if there's eight doors, that's really two sets. If you really look at the unit, um, you'll, you'll see a seam at some point, right? But it's like one, one unit will have anywhere from four, sometimes five doors. Most of the time it's four though. So you go in, you see a whole bunch of doors. Um, the easy thing is just count them up, divide by four, right? Or you can actually look at the number of units, but, and you know, we, we can dig into that when we need to. Same kind of thing, we use the same meters here. So you've got the before and after on the, uh, on the metering, so we we show that data, and you've got the graph. That's kind of cool. You see a huge difference in that picture, and then you've got the raw data. Lots of fun. All right, tower engineering. This is the uh, the engineer that we use for everything that we do with either the Intella HVAC or the Intella PTAC, right? So I use a, an engineer that specializes in that. Got another sheet here in case you need it for reference. And this is what his report looks like. Now we use different meters here. We've got more room in these units so we can use a bigger, uh, more sophisticated energy meter. So these actually record direct kilowatt hours, right? And so again, a lot of numbers on here. You, you wanna pay attention to the blue first. So the blue is the baseline on the left and the performance on the right. So you can see this is one week in February. They used 1,098 kilowatt hours opposed to the second week which is 827. That is a 25% reduction, which is, which is really good in the middle of February, or $1,413. The second one is actually a PTAC. You can see there's a big difference here. We went from 233 kilowatt hours to 180, which was a 23% reduction, or $274. So you save a lot less per PTAC unit, but this Best Western had 80 of those. So it's 80 times two, or probably, I, we'll, we'll look at that in a second, I'm guessing. I just did a Holiday Inn Express that has 66. So the, you, the, the P-TACs are a volume uh, situation more than anything else. So this is important. Here's what we do with the, um, with the HVAC. So you see down here, this uh, 14, 13. Uh, so we did annual average, average annual savings. All right, so the average domain 43. Probably look what he did. So then you want to weather normalize it, right? Which means if we do a pilot program, well, let me back up. HVAC is very weather sensitive. So the summertime, you're going to see great numbers. I just did a couple of uh, pilot programs where the, the annual savings look like they were over $2,000 a year, right? In the summertime, they'll look low. But what we, so we, we've got a formula that will balance that out for the seasons. So in this sense, for the normal HVAC unit, that, that normalized number came up from 1413 to $1,622 and the PTAC from 274 up to 356. If this had been done in the summertime, it would go the other way. The numbers would be high and then we would kind of bring them down low. That's an important piece to point out to a client because we're not trying to oversell this, right? The idea here is that we set the right expectation. I don't want to just sell you that, hey, we're going to save you $2,000 a year. I want to show you that because that's what came from the pilot then I want to bring it back down to say, you know, $1,400 a year because I, I want to set the right expectation. We want them to be happy and we want to tell them what we're really going to do at the end of the day. These are the screenshots from this meter. It's called an EKM meter, right? So you get some graphs here. Again, look, this meter does the same thing as the other one. It gives us the exact numbers. Here's the usage, 1098, 827. That was for the, uh, the normal RTU. Here's the raw data. And then here's the other one for the PTAC, 233 and 180. Same thing, just gives two, two, you know, two different kind of graphs. I select them because if you don't, it's just blank and it looks bad. So we, um, we put the both, both of them in there. Another graph, raw data. All right, finally, we come to the summary sheet. Now, this is the part that Madison Energy puts together based on all this data and reporting that we've received. So what we do after you've shown the client all that is we want to put it all in one spot for them, right? So it goes by each product. The energy squared shows them. Here's your average annual savings. And then we multiply that by how many energy squares they had. So we can show them that, hey, we're saving you over $4,000 a year. 
Now, the next thing that we do is I multiply that out by 10 years. I look at the client and say, I'm going to assume you're not going anywhere for a little while, right? And we want to look at the long-term benefit. This isn't just a gas and oh, gas, you know, gas you up. This is a long-term benefit. It's a, it's, a, it's a good investment. So the next 10 years, it's over $41,000 that we're putting to his bottom line, just with the energy squares. Now with the anti-sweats, 1,024. Uh, he only needed three of those. I think it was actually a, uh, a liquor store, not a convenience store. So we've got $3,000 a year, or over the next 10 years, another $30,000. The Intella HVACs, we had a normalized number of 1,600. And yet he has 14 of those, so we've got 22,700 or $227,000 over the next decade. This is where, you know, it's where they start smiling a little bit. The P tax, we had an average number of 356. Now they've got a couple of hotels, so they had, that times 280 is 99,000 a year. Over the next 10 years, it's almost a million dollars. So if you add all this up, it's, it's $1.3 million that we're going to put to somebody's bottom line over the next decade. And we're going to do it with a 15-month ROI if they decide to write a check up front. Now, the part of this that you guys don't see, because when I do the case studies, I don't include this next page because we don't want, to, uh, we don't want pricing to get out there. But this is where we put the actual project itself together for them, right? So you, as you saw, we're saving them close to $130,000 a year. And then here's the project, and we don't hold back. So we show them what each individual product would cost. We include the installation and the tax. So he's looking at 163,000. That's why the ROI up here was 15 months. Whereas if you see the individual ROIs, they're all pretty low, right? We put it all in there. We're, we're, we're very upfront. This client, we gave them both a, a 12 month and a 24 month option. The reason that I show both of these is because when, I, when you look at the 12 month, you can see he's negative almost $4,200 a month, right? Still saving good money, but your, your cash flow negative. So what's that make him do? That makes this one look really nice because this one, he's positive 2,600. So I, I, I look at the client and say, if you do business with me, you make $2,600 a month. We'll finance this for you. No money down, no credit checks. It's off balance sheet. All you do is sign the Madison Energy lease and give us the first month's payment and we go to work. And as soon as that happens, you're making $2,600 a month with us, or with you in this case. And then of course, we've got the, uh, the warranties here that, that we include as well. So I'm gonna open it up for questions. Henry, I'll start with you in case there's anything that you want me to uh, point, point out. Great, well, thank you for that demonstration, Will. It's wonderful. Um, I have a question. When it comes to the end, a lot of times, uh, you, know, you have that silence or pause. What is um, a statement that you might give to kind of push uh, one of these clients uh, towards the sale. Um, I know I know it's a kind of a, uh, a difficult question sometimes, but sometimes you use an approach of like, if you don't do this, you're gonna be paying this or uh, something like that, but you must have some kind of uh, statement that you might uh, give that client. So here's the funny thing. Uh, the answer is I don't. And the reason is this, I make my statement when I present this proposal and when I finish it, right? The last thing that I would say to this client is I, I would have been at the 24 month lease option and I, was, and I would have said with a simple agreement in the first month's payment, you'll make $2,600 a month with me. And then I don't talk. And if they're quiet, so am I. I don't say anything. So I don't want to give them any, uh, any reasons. I'm not going to give them the objections, right? So if they're silent, they're thinking, I let them do it. Um, they'll come up with whatever it is, you know, if, if they've got a question, if they're silent, they may be thinking, they may be looking for a question, who knows, right? I, I let them do what they're going to do. There's plenty of time for me to, to encourage them forward if I need to. Now, if they, you know, if they come back and, and say, oh, you know, I, I don't know, and da, 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 then, you know, it, it depends on the objection, right? And, and we can certainly talk about those. You know, one thing, if they do bring up the, the objection of, you know, spending the money, right? Like, oh, I don't know right now, it's busy, cash is kind of tight. The answer is any sort of objection at all about spending the money. And the answer is you're buying this every month right now. Anyway, you're either going to write the check to me or you're going to write the check to your utility company with me. You're going to write it for 24 months and then you're not going to write it anymore with your utility company. You'll just keep writing it as long as you're in business. Those are your two options, right? So that, that's, that's how we overcome that. Um, 
you know, the other thing I like to point out is, you know, I, I don't, I'm not the kind of guy, I, I'm not a salesman. I don't sell product, right? I, I, I sell investments. I, all the way back to my time on Wall Street with Merrill Lynch, I still sell investments. So I'm, what I'm selling is this ROI here, right? I'm saying, you know, find me somewhere else that you can write a check for $163,000 and that investment is going to put $130,000 to your bottom line from now on. Because if you have it, I want to know about it because I'll, I'll write that check myself, <laughs> right? So um, I show them the cash flow. I show them the ROI. Now, if they write a check up front, the ROI matters, right? But if they don't, if they finance it, which a, a lot of clients do, there, there's no reason not to. Well, I mean, there's, there is interest built into this. Know that. There, there's interest built into the lease. So I do have guys that they don't want to pay any interest and, and they have the cash and, and so they write it up front. A lot of guys, the interest doesn't matter because you're still making money. So, you know, it's, this, is, this is the part that they focus on. But if they go with the lease route, then there is no ROI. The ROI is today, right? Because you're, you're cash flow positive. Um, and again, you know, the same thing, you're still making the investment and it's still putting, that, it's putting this amount of money to your bottom line every month. And, and this, is, this is proof, you know, this, I'll tell you this, the, one of the biggest things, that, one of the, the reason that this proposal is so robust, the reason, I mean, and if I showed you what my proposals look like five years ago, it, it's funny, compared, I mean, it's not, but it's funny compared to this. Like these are so robust now, they're so thorough. And the reason is the, the biggest thing that you're really fighting is the skepticism, right? How do I know this stuff works? Well, because we hooked up some meters and then we downloaded them and, and the numbers said this, right? We, we, we can't make this stuff up. We, don't, we, we, we didn't hack the meters, right? I mean, I love a good conspiracy, don't get me wrong, but you know, th th this is why we do this. Uh, I, we don't do, I, and I tell clients, I say, look, I don't do pilot programs for fun uh, by any means. If all, I could, if all I had to do is hook this stuff up and, and wait a couple months and your bill came down and then you'd pay me, I would do that instead. Um, these pilot programs are not fun. I don't enjoy writing the checks and, and spending the money. I mean, I, I like giving, you know, creating jobs and all, but you know, I, I would bypass this if, if I could. But number one, this process is not one that I created. It's, it's one that was handed down to me by the utilities because they want to see this data. And number two, this is the most accurate way for me to prove to you what these products are doing for you. This, this is how we get real numbers, right? This, this is how I come up with these reports and say, hey, on, on your HVACs, in your building, in your town, with your utility rate, here's what the numbers look like. These aren't, they're not going to be like this all the time, but this, this gives a good sense of, of, you know, what it should look like for you. Um, and, and, you know, and, and then, again, I, I go into, you know, this stuff has been around for 10 years. We've done business with some very large companies, right? McDonald's, Sonic, Chick-fil-A, Disney, Universal Studios, Papa John's, uh, Hilton, gosh, I mean, they, you know, the names go, I've got, I've got names for days, right? I, I got a little whiteboard over here I can look at and cheat. Um, you know, Marriott, Burger King, right? So, you know, we've done business with very large companies that you can believe have followed up behind us that, that have tried to make sure that, that, that the investment was good. Um, they've taken small steps, right? I, you know, if I do business with a company that has a thousand locations, they don't buy for a thousand up front. They'll give us 50, then they give us 100 more, then it's okay, you guys are doing good. Here's 200, right? And, and we work our way through it. So the, the simple fact that we've been able to do that over the last decade um, and, 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 do, and be consistent about it proves that this stuff does its job, right? It's just, it's very, very simple. And, and, and the simplicity is something that I think is great to lean on and, and point to with all this, right? There's a lot of other complicated things out there that you can do with energy and they're, you know, they're expensive. Madison Energy's value proposition, your value proposition, is that we kept it simple, we kept it affordable, and we wanted to contribute to your profit margin as quickly as possible. And that's what we stand on. That, that's wonderful. Uh, uh, well, really quick, when, uh, you have a client that says, you know, maybe I would like to uh, get this pilot started. What would be your best uh, uh, way to get the person started? Is there a certain paperwork that you like or a phone call? What's the process uh, for the viewers here? So number one, you want to you want to ask some questions, right, and find out what they have, right? You know, if, if it's a McDonald's, you know, how many locations do you have? Something like a fast food or a restaurant, you know, we can we pretty much know at the top of our heads. You know, McDonald's is going to have three HVAC units and two coolers, right? Um, if they're a different kind of business, uh, you know, feel free to ask them, right? If if it's something that's a little bit different, like a hotel or um, a convenience store, 
ask them, you know, how many walk-ins do you have? How many HVAC units do you have on average per location? You know, you, you want to qualify your deal. You want to know what you're looking at, right? Is, is this a, a $5,000 commission? Is it a $50,000 commission? You know, you want to know. Um, the other thing I'll say you know, for the pilot programs, they need to have a conference call with Madison Energy, right? It, it'll be either me or my um, vice president. And the reason is just so that we've touched base with them, just so we make sure that they have all their questions answered. It's an, act, uh, it's an added layer of qualification for that client, which is important. Because at the end of the day, we don't just want to, you know, a lot of people I think get you know, really happy with, you know, hey, just do the pilot and, and kind of get off running. But you, this is a really important part of the conversation, right? It, it's, it's not just about doing a pilot. That's not a win for anybody, not you, not me, not the client. Um, what we want to make sure of, the most important question that you can ask a client is, hey, if we go through this process that we've described and everything comes out and it looks the way that it needs to look, does that mean you and I do business together? And it's just a verbal commitment. We don't make them sign anything. They wouldn't do it anyway. Um, but you want that verbal commitment. It, it is absolutely necessary. And when you get it, your chance, you, you increase your chances of success exponentially, right? Um, I even have a, a strategy that I do with some clients, you know, if, if, you know, maybe they're like medium size or a little bit larger, where I'll try to sell them the first couple of locations, right? And the thing there, statistically speaking, if you can get a smaller sale from a client, the chances of your close just went up 100 times, right? I mean, I, as a matter of fact, nine times out of 10, if the client buys the first couple locations from me, I'm getting the rest. I mean, I, I'm, I'm almost counting it on my balance sheet at that point because I know, right? And, you know, it'll be something like if they've got 20 locations, you know, and I'll just, I'll just throw it out there. Like, listen, you know, we'll, uh, we'll do the first two, just buy the units for the pilot program. It's, you know, X amount, did the math off the top of my head, money back guarantee. And then when we're done, we'll look at the rest, right? And you know, if they, oh, I don't know, I don't, you know, I don't think I want to spend any money up front. Okay, no problem. You know what? I think I can pull some strings and get it done for you. This is what I call pilot program 2.0, by the way, right? So it's a little bit advanced. Um, if you're not comfortable with that, then then by all means, as long as they qualify, then we'll, you know, we'll we'll run the pilot. But I'm just giving that to you as a strategy because I, I've used that in the past. Again, simply because I know that if I can get you for a thousand, I can get you at a hundred thousand, right? And so I, it's, it's a way to know very soon up front how qualified they are. That's great. great. Well, uh, you really answered a lot of our questions. Uh, I have this uh, recording to share with the leaders. I'm sure if they have any questions, we can write them down. I don't want to hold you up uh, any further. We really appreciate all your time, and uh, we're blessed to have you. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it. Um, if anybody has anything specific, feel free to, to reach out directly or, or call Henry, and uh, we'll get your question answered. Thanks, Will. Yes, sir. Well, have a great night, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, Henry.